to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees, <laughs> you know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe we'll go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome back wi-fi i was i was feeling a little bit of my wakanda forever on that vibe right there now that's a vibe and that is exactly what we're here to talk about today i'm going to give you a little bit of my black thoughts on what kind of forever and what it really signifies and signals and means for us as black women but before i get into today's content you already know what time it is what are we gonna do tomorrow night the same thing we do every night pinky try to take over the world it is time for the next transmission Right, welcome back, Wi Fi's, to another transmission of the Wireless Woman. We're coming from underground in room 303. You already know I'm trying to stay off the radar. I'm trying to not kick up too much dust, I'm trying to keep my shoulders clean. But go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. You already know why when you like this video. Well, I love it. I love that. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And click the notification bell for uploads of when I upload content and when I go live. It is still an opportunity to take a certain time of the year to reflect, look back on how far you've come and be grateful and thankful for where you are. And one of the things that really, really allows people to be humble and gracious is gratefulness. You know, I had a moment where I was really deep in my depression and I told my therapist that, I say, you know, I noticed that I'm not as grateful. I don't have the gratitude that I used to have. And a lack of gratitude really builds narcissism and selfishness in the soul. You have to be grateful. You know, you have to allow yourself to be humbled by the greatness of the, the powers that are around you, that hold you in place. You know, understanding how small you are, standing at the edge of the ocean and just knowing that there's something keeping all of this stuff together, holding all of us down, you know, and it's not just gravity, you know, that's a force, but the energy that emanates through us all and animates us all. It's, it's an astounding thing when you really take a step back and be grateful for the food you eat, for the heat, for the house, for the car, for the socks, just when you needed them, you know, it's it's a little thing to be grateful, but the things that we have, even the little things, are such a a miracle. It's worth it to take time and be grateful for that, and I hope that you will over this next upcoming holiday. But I have something to give praise for today. I went out this week and got to see Wakanda forever. I mean, we were going to see it. I was going to see it. And so I went to go see it. And yes, I was on a date. And I already know how y'all are going to feel about it. But I just want you to know I am still in the boycott. I'm still boycotting with you. You know, fellowship and companionship, is, it's 
It's not in violation of the of the boycott manifesto. Anyway, um, I was deeply moved, deeply impacted by the film. I've heard a lot of people say that, that they thought it was really good, you know, and I'm not sure what their reasons were, but I know that for me, I took a lot from it and I'm going to share that. Um, I was so deeply moved by the movie that like I went in the bathroom after it was over and started to ball. Okay. I was crying uncontrollably, to be quite honest. I know women in the next style probably thought I was having like a miscarriage or like got a call during a movie that somebody died because it was it was that level of grief. Um, it was that level of grief unloading over the past couple of movies that I've gone to see. And I don't go to see movies much. So maybe that's why <laughs> I get so impacted by them. You know, as the original wireless woman, I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't spend a lot of time on media in that way. And um, I found that when I went on a music fast back in college, you get so desensitized to hearing music, hearing sounds, watching media all the time, that when you actually purge it from your regiment, when you come back to it, it's like sensory dep deprivation. It comes rushing in. And so, you know, the last couple of films I've watched, I've really felt seen, you know, I've really felt validated as a black woman and seeing those images of strong, uncompromising black women, you know, who were put in the position to save their nation. And they rose to the challenge of that. I mean, I was so impacted by those black images with natural hair and, you know, natural makeup and natural bodies and natural features. It was overwhelmingly beautiful to me, you know, as someone who derives my energy, derives my identity from nature now. You know, as someone who is promoting unplugging from the matrix, these, you know, fake curated images, it was so beautiful to see. I know, I know, you know, there's still enhancements and things like that that are done in the film, but, you know, they were just real, natural, black, dark, beautiful, vulnerable, strong women you know and to see them be the salvation of a nation it just you know it, it floored me it brought me to tears I was crying so hard in in the bathroom it was embarrassing it was so embarrassing. And there was an attendant there. Thank God for her. Jeez. I mean, that, that's what I'm talking about is that sisterhood right there. Thank God for her. Because she was like, it's the movie. I was like, yes, exactly. Because people were looking at me like they didn't know whether they needed to be like, are you okay? Like, has something happened to you? Like, I don't know. Like, I looked like I had been a victim of something. Like, I was crying that hard. It was really bad. <laughs> But when I got outside and I was talking to my friend, my date, you know, about why I had been so impacted by that, that's what just unloaded. You know, we don't know how heavy the grief is until we're, we're willing to press into it. And I told him that. I said, you know, as a black woman, you see so many negative images. You're too masculine. You're not feminine enough. You you know, you don't have power. You think you're this, you, and it's so difficult. And I told him that I said, it's, it's strange because we've been put in the position where we're damned if we do, 
And we damned if we don't, if you don't have children, if you're not married, oh, it's something wrong with you. If you do have children and you're not married, oh, well, you're not going to get a decent man because you've had children. If you are educated, oh, you think you're somebody because you got an education. If you don't have any education, you're a hood rat, you're ghetto, you, you're classless. You know, if you try to come to a situation and negotiate your fair value and worth, you're a bitch. If you don't, you know, negotiate your fair value and worth, you should have chose better. There's, there's no winning. And I told him, I said, it feels as a black woman, like we're on a multi-front war, like we can't win. And I saw that theme echoed in the movie, you know, it was not their fight to win. And prior to Suri taking on being the Black Panther, there was, you know, this dynamic there with the queen and her being in that vulnerable state, but still staying in her power. And when they went and got the scientist, the the female scientist, which they said the next Iron Man was going to be a black woman. And I was like, but how though? But how though? But like, how though? You know, I'm not a Marvel comic book reader. I'm a Marvel movie watcher. So until they introduce these characters, I don't know about them. But Iron Man is one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite Marvel characters. <laughs> So to see a black woman be Iron Man, to see a black woman be Black Panther, and to finally have black female superhero archetypes at the forefront of a film. And I mean, it was really just really all only them, you know, Superman and Batman or Bucky or I, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong universe. Sorry, I'm, I'm in the wrong universe. You know, there was no Captain America. There was no... um What's the one? Falcon, maybe? I don't know. Spider Man, there was none of those people coming to ally and help them and save them. You know, it was a black woman standing up in a void that had been left by the departure of men. And yes, he passed. He died. I'm not saying that all. I'm not saying that Wakanda took the black man out of the house. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. We are working as black women as a deficit in our community, period. It doesn't matter how you look at it. Even if every single black man was an upstanding black woman choosing black man, we would still be at a deficit because of incarceration, because of black on black homicide and crime, because of interracial relationships and dating out. Black women. Black men are not going to be the salvation of us. They're not going to be the salvation of our community. And it's not completely just because they won't. It's because they can't be. These are times that are coming down to us. If that was not the case, if that wasn't true, we wouldn't feel the pressure that we feel. But to see, you know, Okoye reaching out and building relationships with other black women, her sitting, you know, and listening to um, when she was sitting down talking to Lupita's character and giving her the room and the space to grieve and to unload and to talk and to have the support, you know, of her own sister, who Okoye had also lost her husband in a different way for different reasons you know but these were women that were choosing their community their nation and their country even over what the men felt like they wanted and needed to do in the absence of having the support at times and in certain ways of their men, they still came in and continue to support each other. And it was seeing black women not just be in the, even the strong black woman, you know, woman king archetype. You know, we had two black female inventors and scientists putting their minds together to deliver their nation. We had black 
warriors. We had black politicians and diplomats in the queen. We had so many different looks at what black women can be when they work together, when we stay on code. Section leaders, what is our concept? One band, one sound. One band, one sound. When we recognize there's something greater at stake than just what we each individually as women can reap from really the downfall of our nation. A lot of us are reaching into this void, trying to clutch things for ourselves instead of collectively locking arms and saying that we're going to build something that's big enough for all of us. I haven't done my um, pick me video that I intend to do, but there's a lot of women reaching over other women to try to pick up a man when all of us are being drugged down by that bark of standards and boundaries continuing to be lowered, we have to lift each other up. We have to hold each other up. We can't keep working against our own best interests in order to placate and pacify these men, because it's not even just black men, white men, men from other communities are watching us. And I hear a lot of black women, I'm going to get on y'all for a second, acting like white men are the salvation of that. When every single time over the last, I would say two or three months that I've dated out, I've been meeting white men that also don't want to take you out on dates. It also are trying to figure out if they can get you in the bed before they spend any money on you because we are looking like a national, international disgrace with all this desperate lowbrow behavior. And, and what makes it worse is the fact that we have the mitochondrial DNA of the whole world. Every man, woman, and child has been taken out of the black woman's DNA. We have all the potential all the untapped potential of genius. We have, we are now, and have always been the backbone of the black community, civil rights, political reform, prison reform, all of that. We have always been in the background of that. These movies heal the people versus Billie Holiday. We as black women, even in the midst of, being cracked out, even in the midst of welfare, even in the midst of all of these things that they say took black men out of the home, it didn't take black women out of the home. It didn't take them away from their families. I mean, crack kind of did. I ain't gonna lie. That was that was a low moment <laughs> in black woman history. But I do not say these things as an indictment against anyone else. I'm living this truth myself. And it's been one of the hardest things for me as a black woman to be doing everything that was dreamed of for me that I would be able to do to, to carry on my back the dreams of my grandmother and my mother and have people not even applaud for you, not even be happy for you because you're black and a woman. Like it's giving color purple, it really is. Look at you. You're black, you're poor, you're ugly, you're a woman, you're nothing at all. And and I bawled, I cried, I grieved for so many women like me that don't get the Proverbs 31 treatment where it says that her husband and her children call her blessed. That will never know that type of rest. You know, I'm I'm going back to college. I couldn't then a bid to buy a house. I've I've been pre-approved, y'all. Credit stunning, even though it's taking a hit right now with them inquiries, baby. I'm I'm hoping to get out of this process and still and still be in my 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 high seven hundreds, but I just taking a hit. But I'm finally becoming all the things that I saw in my mind that I could be. And it grieves me to see 
the image of so many women like me be tanked. And in that respect, I can understand the grief black men feel. The the good ones, you know, the ones we like to deem as good. You know, you can be a nice man, but that doesn't necessarily make you a good man. Some of y'all are delusional. You are not actually good men because if you were, you would not watch your community burn to the ground like, well, it ain't all, it, like you have no responsibility for it. But it's difficult. As a woman, I didn't recognize how much grief I was carrying until I watched these women grieve for their nation, for their children, for their men who were gone for different reasons. And I'm going to tell you the conundrum that I've always had about turning my content towards black women and away from what we all know has to happen in order for us to build our community. We need the help of black men. We do. You know, and watching Shuri have her conversation with Umbaku after she had come back from the plane of the descendants. I, if, I get, if I'm getting this wrong, you know, it is what it is. I'm 40, mind foggy. I got some new tea, though, y'all. I'm going to try it. It's called Three Minds Tea. Um, and it's made by a company called Mycopia, something like that. Mycopia. Mm. I'll tell you about it. If it really works really well, I might actually have to see if I can get them to do a little sponsorship with me or something like that. But y'all got to help me grow, <laughs> grow this channel so that I can actually start to put forward these types of black products in that are coming out of our community and it, to the people that actually will patronize them, you know, but we got to grow this channel and we, we have to do that together. But when she came back, as soon as she went in, as soon as she crossed over and she saw Killmonger, I was like, ooh, baby. First of all, ooh, baby. But ooh, mm, interesting. Because I think that is what we as Black women wrestle with. And it was one of the greatest conundrums that I had myself for the direction that I wanted to take my channel in. Because I tell you, all the time that I see misogyny, just like racism. I feel like black women are in a fight for their image that models the fight that black people were in during the civil rights movement. It really has gotten that bad. And it's hard to work with people who are delusional about whether that's the case or not. But we are really being hated by men. Deluded. Um, manipulated, you know, abused, used as instruments, disposable by men. Their whole mentality about who we are and what we represent to them has changed. And if you still in the past are feeling like, well, you know, I'm going to find a man that loves me and he's going to, baby, you're going to get sucked up. You're going to get swallowed up. And the bones are going to get spit back out. You got to approach these relationships with some standards, with some boundaries for how it is that you're going to be treated. You're going to have to let the man that shows you he can respect you and accept you in your entirety be the one who gets the crown. You know, it's not enough for a guy to like you anymore. Well, I like him because he like me. Like there's there's got to be some standard of expectation that you have for what you want to get out of your relationship, even to be able to bring the best out of a man. You don't want a man in your life that's bringing you what's left over. It's bringing you his worst because that's not the function of a woman in a man's life. A man who finds a wife finds a good thing and he obtains favor from God. We have allowed these men to fall from the grace of God. And this has been God's judgment on us for A man's woman is his nakedness. And when the Bible talks about a man being able to be naked and unashamed, it was talking about you. It was talking about you being his covering. 
And now you're just as lewd and lost as he is. You're full of just as much lust and lasciviousness as he is. There's nothing clean about a man or pure about a man if his woman is in darkness and degradation. I said what I said. You know, and there's a certain piece to that that we do have to own. Why should he choose you if everybody else can? There's nothing about you that separates you and sets you apart as a woman if you won't even defend the thing. Protect the thing that he is entrusting you with. You won't even protect your own womb, your own womanhood. And I know what some people are going to say, well, a woman is not supposed to be protecting this masculine. This is a community that we have. And I said that to my friend. He said, I don't think it's the point that women, you know, are doing great things for themselves. He was like, I think it's the point that y'all feel like y'all are independent of men. And I said to him, because like, when did I become the whisperer for this stuff? But whatever. I said to him, but it's always been that way. From the time that black women were on plantations and their men got sold away. From the time when welfare took the man out of the home. From the time that we had the war on drugs and they cracked down and put in incarcerated just record numbers, droves of black men. It's always been this way. This has always been a black woman's responsibility to take care of the community, the elderly, the children. And we have. The problem is they want us to do it with grace. And when I saw her talking to Killmonger, and he really called her out on it. You know, that's the delicate balance that we as women have to walk because power is going to come to us. There's no way that it can't. I don't really care how what I'm saying makes anybody feel because there's no way that it can't. Who is going to take care of this community? You look around. Where are they? Where are they coming from? I actually spend time talking to black men. It's weird because black women talk to me and other black men talk to me like I'm the one that's delusional sometimes. And it's weird to me because they're the same ones clamoring to build the community. Why it ain't been built yet? Who are you working with? If they come and if they hear and they let me know where they are and what they're doing. And, and that's not to say that there aren't tons of black people that are doing great things, great things, great things, amazing things, wonderful things. They're men and they're women. But we have no community to build for anymore. They continuously talked in the Black Panther about how the Black Panther represented the nation. And I mean, we got Kanye. Does he represent the nation for y'all? Does he? And when I ask Black people that, what is the Black agenda? Nobody's been able to tell me that. Who, who are the Black leadership? Names come out. They do. They come out. But we have no Black nation. And Black women, we're going to have to be the unifiers. And we have to ask ourselves that question. Where does the line draw between protecting the black female image and building the union that we say we're using it to build? And I could see the conundrum that she was having being the great nexus, the great crux. Because we as black women cannot allow the darkness and the blackness to come into our soul. It causes us to become the very thing that we've been defending ourselves against. We are powerful. And we're being endowed with more power. We're being chosen. We're being harnessed with greatness in a time when the world needs us. It actually needs our protection. It needs our standards, our boundaries. But as I've said in my Sigma female video, we have to figure out how to be the sword, but also the shield. And I was, I'm going to be honest, I was conflicted because I wanted Suri to be Malcolm. 
by any means necessary. <laughs> Not Martin, but she was both. She told Mercy, you know, I hope like women when we're given power that we will harness power with grace and love, with mercy. We can't let this thing turn us black inside. And, ooh, baby, I want to be Malcolm so bad. Because, you know, I put on my channel by any means necessary. I'm Magneto. I be wearing my Magneto shirt on here. I'm, 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 I'm about that life. I believe in it. They put some respect on my name. We need to make them respect us. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it by any means necessary. But at what cost? I promised... I would take you on the journey that I've gone on and so many things in my life have changed and I want to be able to embrace this next season of my life, to enjoy it, to share it. You know, I didn't work this hard to wield power, to hone it and hoard it over someone else. I did what I had to do. Suri did what she had to do to protect the people that she loved, to unify her nation under the banner of who and what they believe in. But she also fought her own inner demons to make sure that she wasn't plunging her people into darkness just for the sake of unifying them. I don't know what comes next. I said that in one of my most recent videos. I can't tell you right off. There, there's a lot of black women in this space that want other black women to feel like they know. And we do know. But I'm not sure if we really understand what we must do. I don't want to be the bigger person any more than anybody else does. I don't want to be the bigger person. Listen, <laughs> I done been put through stuff, baby. And all that stuff that I went through made me who I am. I want to show that. But everything that I am, what it costs me, it shouldn't have to cost me that again. I shouldn't have to exact that price from other people or else how are we better than the racist? How are we better than the sexist? How are we better than the misogynist? How are we better than the people that put us in this position if we're going to respond to power the same way? And I've had a lot of other black women around me trying to tell me this. And I didn't know how to let it go. Because sometimes it hurts you more to hold it than to let it go. Sometimes it scares you to believe in something beautiful. But when you can't believe in something beautiful, you can't see the beauty in yourself. And watching those women, when they scream, watching those images, it was beautiful. And of course, people have come back from it and deconstructed it. Oh, it's the, you know, it's the white media trying to send messages about this is what the black community has always been. The Black Panthers were majority black women. The NAACP, all of these agencies that have brought about change in the black community. Even if a black woman never did anything but raise a ladle, we have raised our nation. Even if a black woman never did anything but made a cup of stew, we have given life to every one of these black men, every one of these dirty, dark bastards. They have sat on these social media platforms and talked about us like trash came out of us. And it has hurt. And I have hurt as a black woman for all black people. And I felt like the only way to validate my pain was to hold it. But we got a promise. We got too much promise. We got too much potential to let this rot us from the inside out. When they look for a hero, that's what we're going to give them.
Trust me, trust this plan, this process, just stay in here. When they call, a hero is what we're going to give them. And we're going to do it the way that women do it. We're going to do it scared. And we're going to do it vulnerable. And we're going to do it with grace and with mercy. And we're not going to give in to the narcissism of power. We're the last ones. And the last will be first. We are the last ones. There's a reason why the Bible says that a lion lays down with a lamb. And a child will lead them. Because there's the man. There's the woman. And then the last group that God will raise up to make kings out of them. And queens out of them will be the children. But they will be the children that we gave birth to. That we raised. That we set the image for. And we got the ability to right the wrongs of these men. But no, if we give in to their methods, their tactics, and their ways, we're going to show them the type of leadership that we needed from them. The reason why all these women getting up and divorcing all these men, I mean, rich men, they thought money fixed the price. See, y'all women like men with money. And Elon Musk has had four wives. We as black women can't think money is going to fix this. Politics is going to fix this. We have something inside of us that was always the cure, always the anecdote. And that was love. That was mercy, empathy, sympathy. And if we don't hold on to that, We might as well let them stay in power. We might as well let them continue to be that type of creature out here and acquiesce to all of that because we're no better. But I was glad to see women be better and resist being bitter. I was glad to see the hope of the seed of the promise in a child. And a child that only that black woman could give her nation. Black women, you're beautiful. You're important. You're necessary. You're needed. If a black man hasn't told you that, I'm telling you that. And now you got to place enough value on black womanhood and black sisterhood to take that seed and bury it and grow new life from it. That's what I want my channel to be. It took me all that time to figure out why I was here. And this is why I'm here. And I want to hear from you why you're here. And figure out what we can do to be the hero, the unifying image. That our nation needs. Drop me that fire. Headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. Until the next time though. Until the next transmission. You're dismissed. You're dismissed to power. You're dismissed in love. Promise me to take some time this week and unplug from this negative, toxic ass platforms, media, and love on yourself. We've taken so many hits. We got to learn how to be unbothered so that when the time is right, we can be unleashed till the next time. You know the drill. The black woman is the first manifestation of God on earth.